Welcome to the Abrams Boxing Show, powered by Last Out Media and brought to you by www.15rounds.com, the worldwide leader in boxing news. Also, Abrams Boxing PR Media Broadcast, the industry standard for boxing media relations and play-by-play broadcasting. Also, check out www.abramsboxing.com, Abrams Boxing on YouTube, as well as M. Abrams Boxing on Twitter and Mark Abrams Boxing on Instagram. Welcome to another edition of the Abrams Boxing Show. I'm Mark Abrams. This week we'll be joined by Bantamweight McKenna Tansley and junior welterweight Julian Rodriguez will be fighting Friday night, March 10th in Bethlehem, PA, live on BXNG TV. Let's get right down to the news of the week. This past Saturday night from Ontario, California, Brandon Figueroa became the WBC interim featherweight champion with a 12-round unanimous decision over Mark Magsayo. In the, the co feature, it was an upset. Armando Resendi stopped former unified world champion Jared Herb. Resendi's now 14 and 1, 10 KOs. Herb dropped to 24 and 3 in the 10th and final round of their scheduled middleweight bout. Uh, again, that was the co feature on Showtime Championship Boxing. Fight had to be stopped after Herb had a split lip, and the doctors deemed that the fight could not go on. Open up the Showtime Tower class was. 19-year-old Elijah Garcia remaining so undefeated. 14-0, 12 knockouts. Scored a sensational fourth-round stoppage over Amilcar Vidal. Vidal now 16-1, 12 knockouts. Uh, uh, could have a new star on the horizon in Elijah Garcia. He's a very charismatic, good-looking 19-year-old kid out of the Arizona area. So uh, we'll be charting his progress as the weeks and years go by. Uh, before the three-fight card, Showtime had a three-fight card on their social media slash YouTube pages. The main <clears throat> bout of that uh, YouTube was Terrell Gushay scored a 12th round, uh, excuse me, a ninth round stoppage over Brandon Lynch. Gushay, the former world title challenger, goes to 23-3-1. He notches 12th knockout. Lynch falls to 13-1-1. One, and one. Also Saturday night in, in Mexico, in Cuyacan, Sinaloa, Mexico. It was Angel Fierro, the WBO number five rated lightweight in the world. He stopped uh, Emmanuel Estela, excuse me, Eduardo Estela in round four. Uh, time was 258. Fierro again 21 and two, now 16 knockouts. In a fight that took place uh, overseas, a former cruiserweight champion, Rock Goss, yeah, with the 31 notches, 23rd knockout, stopped the uh, former NFL linebacker, Mike. Balagon is now 21 in round two of their WBA international heavyweight title football in uh, um, in Armenia. So Marat Gassiev throws his hat into the, the heavyweight ring that's moving up from cruiserweight. Also Saturday night in Newtown, Pennsylvania, fight that was seen live on BXNG TV. Isaiah Johnson remained undefeated with a six-round unanimous decision over upset specialist Antonio Sanchez. That was a junior welterweight belt that had lined in. Bell card at the Newtown Athletic Club. This week, Saturday night in Australia, live on Showtime, Tim Zhu battles former world champion Tony Harrison in a about the zoo they even need to take, but this is going to be a tough fight for him. Zhu, of course, was ticketed to fight Jamel Charlo for the undisputed junior middleweight championship of the world. Charlo gets hurt. In comes Tony Harrison. The winner will get Charlo. That fight will be live on Showtime. It's 10.45 p.m. Eastern on Saturday night. We are uh, live in Australia on Sunday morning. So that's going to be a very interesting aspect. Saturday in England, live on the zone. Diego Pacheco, 17-0. Battles Jack Collins, 21-3-1. and um, So Diego Pacheco with his toughest fight today. Saturday afternoon on ESPN Plus, former Olympic gold medal winner Tony Yoka will return in the 10-round main event as he takes on former World Cup. Challenger Carlos Decom. That fight will take place in Paris, France. Uh, also, uh, Wednesday night, Juan Manuel Marquez brings his promotional um, his promotional company uh, back to Mexico with a uh, show on Pro Box TV. The main event is a battle between Luis Torres, 17 and 10 knockouts, and Miguel Cabrera, 14 and 10 knockouts for the WBC lightweight title. Um, the card will feature six foot three and super featherweight. Oscar Alvarez taking on Diego Lopez. Friday night in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, but BXNG 
TV. We'll have Julian Rodriguez take on Kayshawn Hutchinson. Also, I uh, want to feature about we have two titles, the WBA Continental Americas title and the NABF Bantamweight title. We'll see uh, McKenna Tansley take on Amy Salinas. This week, I had a chance to talk to both Rodriguez and Tansley. First, we'll talk to uh, the uh, Bantamweight from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. We are here with McKenna Tansley. We're a couple nights away from your NABF and WBA uh, intercontinental fight against Amy Salinas here at the Wind Creek Casino in Bethlehem, PA. How you doing? I'm doing good, thanks. How are you? Well, uh, she, this is your, uh, well, first of all, it's your second fight in about a month. You just had a 47-second knockout. Uh, talk about that, Be going down to Dominican Republic, and, uh, you know, did you even work up a sweat uh, when you uh, did that fight a couple, about, what, three weeks ago? Yeah, it was four weeks ago. Um, I mean, it's hot down there, so you're always going to work up a sweat. But, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was a great experience. It was a great fight. We wanted a first round knockout, so I went in hot, and we got it. Canadian, Canadian going all the way down to Dominican Republic. A little, little, little out of your element, huh? Just a little bit. <laughs> They're very Spanish down there, and I do not know Spanish, so that was fun. <laughs> so Amy Salinas, four and three. She she's a veteran girl. She's beaten a few girls with good records. Um, what, what's your scouting report on her? You know, it's going to be a hard, tough fight. She's a great fighter. She's fought some big names. She just fought Christina Cruz, who she went the distance with. That should say enough right there. That's somebody with a huge pedigree. So, you know, we expect a good action-packed fight. We expect a hard fight, and that's what we're prepared to go in there and do. We mentioned the uh, the first-round knockout. Even though it was someone that I guess you sound like you expected to go in there and get her out of there, but to do that, what's that do for your confidence knowing that, you know, it's only a few weeks ago and, you know, that's that's your latest result. I mean, how much does that help with your confidence? Tons. I mean, I think it helps with anybody's confidence. It, It wasn't even just about that. It was about the fact that that's what I wanted. You know, I went in there, I said, I'm taking her out the first round and that's what I went and did. And that's the exact same approach that I plan to take with Amy is I have a plan with her and I'm going to go in there and execute it. Your world rank now, I know with this win, it probably could take you into the top five. Do you see that? Do you, I mean, can you almost like smell the world title shot that it that, that it's, could be right around the corner? Absolutely. That's what we're going for. That's what I'm here for. I want to be undisputed. I... I'm not doing anything until I get there. So I know this is the next step. This is a massive opportunity for me to break the top five with some major organizations, and that's what I want. What's it been like? I know you've been training in uh, Reading, PA, uh, with Marshall Kaufman's group. I know you're now promoted by Marshall Kaufman, King's Promotion. What's it been like to, to train, you know, with, uh, you know, you go from like one camp. I'm sure you're training up in Canada, and I know you trained a little bit down in Houston. What, what's, it tra- what's it like now training with the, 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 the guys and girls in Reading? It's incredible. You know, it's it's pushed me to a new level, um, which is exactly what I wanted. That's what I need to do in order to get to where I want to get to. So, I mean, I have nothing but good things to say about it. It's obviously been extremely hard, but that's what you need. Is this something that is going to be a permanent thing, at least for the foreseeable future, doing the camps, you know, in, in Pennsylvania? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I'm here for the long term and to have a great career. Um, fighting here. I know you were here for the show box fight, and you saw how how great the fans were, and how great the atmosphere is. It now you're gonna be fighting here at the Wind Creek uh, in the in the ring on Friday night. What are your uh, you know thoughts about that? I mean, it's everything that I wanted. I came to that show. The show box card was absolutely unbelievable. And I said, this is where I want to fight one day. It's awesome that about six weeks later, I actually am fighting here. So I know it's a great atmosphere. I know it's a great venue and I'm ready to put on a show. I know uh, you're not looking past Amy Salinas, but the 118 pound division. I mean, how do you break that down? Where does McKenna Tansley fit in? You know, I think there's a lot of huge potential. There's a lot of big fights. I've wanted to fight Ebony forever. That's a natural one for me. I'd love to take that fight at some point. So that's kind of what we're building up to. But anybody that has a belt, you know, that's really what it is. We're going for a world title. I don't really care which one first. Let's just get one of them. You mentioned Ebony. I know uh, your promoter, Marshall Kaufman, he's done some good business with Eddie Hearn over the last few years. She's with Eddie Hearn in matchroom boxing. So, I mean, you see that maybe with, with, with a win on Friday night, maybe, I don't know if it's be the next one or a win or two after that. I mean, is, is that what you think could possibly happen? 
You know, I think that's completely up to my team. I've got a great coach. I've got a great promoter. They're going to move me through in the way that they think is best for me. So all of those decisions, I leave up to them. I just make sure that I come ready to fight. This fights me live on BXNG TV. In fact, I'll be part of the broadcast uh, team on Friday night. Uh, your your family, friends, your fans in, in, in Edmonton will we'll be able to watch this. Are you expecting a big turnout uh, on the internet on, on uh, Friday night? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've got a great support system. I've got a lot of fan base across a lot of different places. So BXNG TV will have a lot of people tuning in. And my dad's flying home early from Mexico to come to the fight live. So that's pretty special to me, too. Um, the Oilers are hopefully on playing Friday night because because the, the, the family may, may they may have. I know how big can, uh, hockey is up in Canada. They may have a decision to make either either watch their girl fight or watch Connor McDavid play. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's always a tough call with the Oilers. We are a huge hockey fan base, but I'm sure they'll tune in. <laughs> well, they do. They, they have the best player in the NHL right now, Connor McDavid. They may have the best female Bantamweight fighter in the world, according to, to some people. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we're going for. What do you want to say to the fans in closing before we see you Friday night here at the Wind Creek Casino in Bethlehem, PA, live on BXNGTV.com uh, all over the world? Um, honestly, just thank you to all the fans. Thank you to everybody who's kind of been a part of the journey so far. I really want to thank uh, Kings Boxing and Marshall Kaufman for taking me in. That was a huge, huge step in my future. And, you know, tune in for a great fight. And we will see you on Friday night. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Kenna Tansley. There you have it, McKenna Tansley, who will be fighting Friday night in Bethlehem, PA. And the main event will be uh, come back in junior welterweight Julian Rodriguez. He's taking on Kayshawn Hutchinson. I had a few minutes to catch up with him uh, last week. Here we are in Atlantic City with Julian Hammerhands Rodriguez. Good night of fights. Uh, you're behind the microphone. Uh, good card, uh, R&B Promotions here at the Showbo. Yeah, it's always a good time. I, I like to be around boxing. Whether I'm in the ring or out the ring, or you know, trying to get into the business aspect of boxing, uh, good for setting up rings too. You've done you've done that one or two times in your life, right? Oh, I'm gonna have my own my own coast. I'm gonna take take control of my whole branch of my the, my dad's company. So we're going to uh, you know he's he's doing all the bigger shows on you know bigger level PBC Matchroom and stuff like that. So I'll take care of all these shows over here. As uh, if people don't know, watch his dad's Alex Devia, who puts up all the rings at just about every show, East Coast, West Coast, North, South. You have it. But let's get to you, Sarah, uh, Friday, March 10th. Take on Kayshawn Hutchinson at the Wind Creek uh, Event Center in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Get back in the ring. Face that guy, a, a, t a tough kid. He's 10-5, won seven in a row. Uh, but a, a pretty good crossroads fight. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm, I'm grateful. You know, Marshall allowed us to get on the card. And, you know, um, it's a good platform for me to get my, my fight back, you know, my first fight back after being in the ring for out of the ring for a while. Um, Kashan, yes, he, he can be very crafty and everything like that and uh, should be a good fight. And it's a main event, so we're looking to put on a great show. What's been going on? Like you said, you've been out of the ring a couple years. What has been going on? Um, just, just some management issues and clearances that I have to get through, you know what I mean? You know, it's a dirty business and people are... Uh, are always they're very emotional and always in their feelings I feel and they're very they could be very spiteful if things don't go their way or uh, you know things like that you know I don't want to get in too deep but basically it, you know I'm grateful for the time also because it allowed me to grow and mature outside the ring and I feel like that aspect has made me a better fighter. A lot of people, obviously, you know, you're a very good prospect coming out of the amateurs. You racked up, you know, 20-plus wins to start the career, set back to the Pedraja. Do you think a lot of people can be sleeping on you? They saw that performance. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe uh, don't think what Hammerhand sh should have been or was. I mean, and, and do you kind of relish that role, maybe a little bit of pressure off you? Yeah, no, I, I don't really, you know, to be to be honest with you, I don't really even reference that fight because I, I know what was going on, and I've already said my what happened, and if people look at that and say, and it's an excuse or whatever it doesn't really pay mind to me you know I was dealing with a lot of things also outside the ring which uh, again this whole year I was able to reflect and, and really understand the importance of um, having a strong mindset and, and mentality and positive atmosphere throughout this business you know what I mean it could, you could have all the skills and be quick and fast and have all the IQ but if something's off and you're allowing it to get to you mentally it'll definitely show you know not that not saying that that's what happened in that fight you know, it was more so an injury, but, you know, um, 
it's just uh, again I, I assess what was going on not just within the fight but outside the ring and you know I, I shouldn't have even went into that fight to be honest with you but everything's okay now and just more of a case for you can go in this fight March 10th you know the, the, the slate swipe clean almost like like you know no a new beginning Julian Rodriguez 2.0 oh absolutely um, this is definitely a I'm using this as uh, the momentum builder, you know what I mean? And uh, once I go in there and I show that I'm nothing has phased me and I'm still the same hammer hands, you know what I mean? Uh, every, that, that fight will be long forgotten in a matter of six months. So, And you feel maybe with a couple, two, three good performances, you're right back in the middle of things, you know, maybe maybe world ranked and, you know, get kind of, you know, uh, on the edge of, uh, you know, starting to reach your goals. Right, that's the game plan, you know. Uh, I have different priorities now in boxing. Um, and I feel like it's just going to show. And with those priorities, uh, it's inevitable for me to achieve what I want to achieve. What do you want to say to the fans in close? I know we're, we're probably going to talk to you before March 10th anyway, but, you know, it's the first time I got the chance to see you before we officially announced the fight yesterday. Uh, what do you want to say to the fans out there? just want to say, you know, thank you for all the support that I've had. Um, even the people who may say negative things, it's okay. And I, and I appreciate that, too, because I can take that and use that as motivation. So any, anything that comes my way, any type of attention, any type of support, hate, whatever, I, I'm, I welcome it. And uh, just know that I'm going to turn that into motivation and to be the best version of myself. And, you know, you better get used to seeing his face because you're going to see it, whether it's in the ring, on a, on a microphone, building the ring, whatever the case may be. I, I am pretty much, I want to be a fighter that's uh, the most involved in boxing as possible. I know you've done that a couple times. You did it again tonight, do the color commentary. Uh, you, you, you like doing it? I love it. I love, this is what I love to do. So, um, you know, of course I'm going to give it all I have in terms of in the ring, but outside the ring, after I retire and all that stuff, I'm heading right back into the business. You know, this is my life. You know, I've been doing this since I'm a young child. I, I love every aspect of the sport. Um, and I feel like there needs to be a lot of fixing within the sport as well. So I hope to be one of those that, that advocate for that. Well, March 10th, he's going to look to display those hammer hands for the crowd in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. We takes on Kayshawn Hutchinson, live Kings promotions. Uh, Jolene, uh, we'll see you in about a month. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you. And this is how it went. That interview was taped a few weeks ago. So Julian Rodriguez taking on Kayshawn Hutchinson. Uh, also, a couple other Fight cards coming up Saturday on VXNG TV from Springfield, Massachusetts. Denzel Whitley, 10 0, takes on Kenny Larson on the field as well, 6 0. Also, Saturday in Orlando, Thomas Cornflake, the monitor, the number five ranked WBA middleweight in the world, 34 5 1, takes on Salim Larby, 22 11 for the WBA Latin middleweight championship. A few new news items of the week before we wrap this thing up. Hall of Fame promoter, uh, matchmaker, and publicist Bobby Goodman passed away. At the age of 83 in Galloway, New Jersey. Bob be a longtime employee of uh, Madison Square Garden and Don King, great boxing man, passes away at the age of 83. Undefeated WBC interim super welterweight champion Sebastian Fundora, 20 that one 13 knockouts. Will defend his title against Brian Mendoza, 21 and 215 knockouts. That fight will take place Saturday, April 8th, live on Showtime at the Need Health Sports Bar uh, Park in Carson, California. The telecast will also be undefeated super lightweight contender Brandon Lee 27 0 23 knockouts take on Pedro Campa 34 2 1 23 knockouts a 10 round uh, co main event and also opening up the bout uh, card with Luis the Twist Nunez 18 0 13 knockouts take on Christine Olivo 20 0 1 7 knockouts a 10 round bout and they all in a way the uh, former 118 115 112 108 world champions can move up to 122 pounds to face Stephen Fulton, the unified 122-pound world champion. In a way, 24-0-1-21 knockouts. Fulton, 21-0, eight knockouts. And what's going to be a can't-miss fight, you know, mouth-watering fight, so to speak. A lot of fans are looking forward to it. That will take place Sunday, May the 7th, uh, in Yokohama, Japan. It's going to be early in the morning. So that's going to be a full day of boxing. Canelo will probably fight May 6th, get a couple hours of sleep, wake up, watch Stephen Fulton take on Mayo in a Way um, on May the 7th, live on ESPN. Plus. Injury force Callum Smith out of his light heavyweight clash with Pavel Stefan for this fight on March 11th in Liverpool, England. The event will go on live on the zone with Diego Pacheco and Jack Collins, as we mentioned before. The IBF ordered Melvin Lopez 25 and what, 1 19 knockouts and Emmanuel Rodriguez.
Syracuse, 21 and 2, to fight for the vacant IBF Bantamweight Championship. Uh, first bid uh, will happen around uh, March 28th. If I know, um, uh, uh, no uh, deal can be made. And finally, uh, due to an undisclosed injury, injury Amanda Serrano uh, will not be able to make her May 20th rematch with Katie Taylor, the much anticipated rematch in Dublin, Ireland. Looks like Chantel Cameron, uh, the unified 140 pound world champion, and Katie, uh, or the undisputed 140 pound world champion, and Katie Taylor may get it on on May 20th in, in Dublin, Ireland. I'd like to thank everyone uh, for tuning in this week, and next week we'll be breaking down all the fights uh, from this past weekend, all the news of the week, and previewing next week's slate of action. So, uh, thank you for everyone for joining us on the Amos Boxing Show. We'll talk to you next week.